Nice one. Have a good day. Cheers, thank you. What's this? Nothing. It's just the M2 MacBook Air. So there you go, this is what happened earlier on today. It's the MacBook Air and it's in midnight. It's not yet open, so let's do it all together. We'll take off this outer box and we'll see what is inside. There you go. It is the eight gigs of unified memory, 512 gigs of SSD, and it is the 13.6 Mac book air in midnight straight out of the box so I guess what we need to do is get this cellophane off which presumably is there a little tab on it yes there is there's the tab there you can tell I'm not practiced at this can't you and if we get a hold of that there we go and off it comes so let's get it out and have a look shall we what's in here there it is guys that is the MacBook Air in Midnight. So let's put it out and in the box there is stickers. There must be stickers. Tell me there's stickers. Please have stickers. What have we got? There's instructions and yes, there's stickers. And they, I don't know if you can see it if I hold it up against the white. You can actually see that they match the color of the Mac. So the MacBook Midnight they're max weight, midnight blue stickers. So I'll be putting those somewhere and all the other normal paraphernalia. Now I've got the standard, oh, I've got the dual port charger. There you go. Because now with these, you can, uh, if I hold it under there, you can actually charge two things at once. And apparently it depends on what you've got plugged in as to how the power is sorted out and appropriated. But, uh, so I've got dual charger there and that's the plug obviously for it as well, just the standard normal plug i've never been so untidy with i'm normally I'm really careful when i do these because i'm doing it in front of the camera i'm being a bit more reckless and we have got the uh charging cable which is in midnight matches the mac so uh yep oh it's got a white plug at the end that seems odd they've got a beautiful midnight all the way through and then a white usb-c plug at the other end but anyway it's nice quality material it feels really quality it's the same that's on my macbook Pro, except for this is, uh, of course, in midnight, whereas the pros don't get a color coded um, cable. Right, so that's everything that's in the box. Let's look at the thing we came here for, which is the MacBook Air. There you go, guys. That is it. It is a fingerprint magnet, I can tell you that already. <laughs> My hands aren't particularly wet, but uh, it's already showing marks on it there, but I don't even see it in the cameras anywhere. But it is light. That is the first thing that strikes me. It is so, so light and really slim. I mean, the dimensions of it, it's hard for me to describe quite how light it is, but you would not know that you had that in a backpack, I reckon. Port-wise, as you know, you've got the headphone jack, uh, and you've got MagSafe is back and two USB uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports, not four, but Thunderbolt 3, so you can charge through there if you want to, but obviously you use the MagSafe if you can and leave the other ports free. So I suppose it behoofs me to do is um, open it up and I'll do it in front of the camera. Here we go. And that is it booting up for the very first time. It's actually quite a dark color. You would probably call it more charcoal if I was being honest than midnight blue. Uh, I guess in some angles it gets the midnight, but on the whole, it is quite a charcoal -y color. The screen looks gorgeous. It's not the LED uh, that I've got used to on the MacBook Pro, of course, it's not the 120 hertz refresh rate, but it is a lovely screen, it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna to have to get that thing set up in just a moment. That's what we're gonna be doing. The keyboard, yep, keyboard's nicely balanced. Obviously, it's got the full set of function keys at the top, the touch bar, it's so light. It is so light. <laughs> I've been used to my Mac. the main language. Press the return key. 
oh, looks like we need to set up. Wasn't ready for that, so I'll hit return key. Uh, we're into English by the looks. It is so light, that's, as I say, I was getting used to the MacBook Pro. And uh, after that, wow, this is amazing. So I'll finish setting that up in just a moment, but the first, well, you can really see the fingerprints are attracting to it, but uh, yeah, for, it's beautiful. It is a, a squidged down version of my MacBook Pro, but the, the kind of look and size of it is very, very similar indeed. But first impressions. OS contains a built-in screen reader called VoiceOver. If you know how to use VoiceOver, press Command F5 now to turn it on and set up your Mac. If you would like to learn how to use VoiceOver She's to set up your Mac, press the Escape key. Quite insistent. I think I better do that then. The MacBook Air that I've had to live today is the one with the eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, eight gigs of unified memory, and 512 gigs of SSD storage. It's got a 13.6 inch liquid retina display, a 1080p FaceTime camera. It's got a MagSafe charging port and two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. Of course, it's got the magic keyboard with Touch ID, which I've already set up. It's got a force touch trackpad, and it comes with this brand new USB-C dual port power adapter. So today is special for all kinds of reasons and predominantly because it's gone full circle for me. My first ever Mac years and years ago was this from 2011, a MacBook Air. Now you can see why it's so special. One of the things I love about it is that light up glowing logo. I wish they still had that on the lid, but it's got great memories for me this and this was the Mac that brought me into all of my other Macs I've owned since. But we moan about bezels. Just look at the bezels on this bad boy from 2011. We really have come a long, long way, haven't we? And just look at the size comparison. Well, it's virtually the same width as the brand new M2 MacBook Air, but it's just slightly less deep, which you may be able to see there. Not quite as deep, but virtually the same width. Let's have a look at the new MacBook Air compared to my MacBook Pro. So these are the two newest Macs that I own. We've got the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro and the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air that just arrived today. And you can probably see the difference in thickness there. There is a big difference in thickness. I would say this is almost half as thick again, the MacBook Pro, and it's the weight is the real difference. The weight, this you know you're carrying. I've always thought this is kind of a machine that is able to be moved around, but really is designed to stay in the office, whereas this very much is for portability. And this is gonna be traveling with me to the office every single day. But the design of them, as you can see, is very, very similar. If I just put those on top of one another, you might get a little bit better of an idea quite of the thickness of them. And you can see also the difference in size. If we look at those two, they are considerably different in size, much, much smaller on the footprint. But having looked at the screen on this, you actually feel that you're getting a slightly bigger screen than a 13.6 inch screen that it claims to have. It feels like you're working on quite a big space because of course of the smaller bezels and the way that the display just looks and feels now. Battery life, of course, is something that we're all interested in with these Apple Silicon Macs. And I'll be trying this one out because I'm gonna try and edit the video and create the thumbnail for this video on this Mac straight out of the box without charging. They claim it's got up to 18 hours of Apple TV or video playback and around about 15 hours of web browsing. Having used the M1 Max MacBook Pro, I can say that the battery life on these things really is astounding. If you're just using it for general day-to-day -day work, I don't think you're gonna have any issues with battery life. In fact, a couple of weekends ago when I went away, I forgot to take the charger with me for the M1 Max MacBook Pro because I just never use it. I always rely on it being able to get me through what I need. So the battery life on these Apple Silicon Macs really is something special. And we're gonna put this one to the test today, I hope, as you know, this MacBook Air is totally redesigned and they've come up with a brand new place for the speakers. Gone are the grills down either side. Now it's hidden underneath this part of the body here between the keyboard and the display. It's a four-way speaker setup and it's great for separation and also set up ready for spatial audio as well. And the headphone jack on this MacBook Air is the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with advanced support for high impedance headphones. So you can drive any set of headphones you want through this Mac without having to take any kind of DACs with you. So if you spend a lot of time online and want to know what the webcam is going to be like, this is me using the inbuilt webcam off of the M2 MacBook Air. It's got a 1080p camera built in, as I mentioned before, and this is using the three mic array that you'll find on the M2 MacBook Air. I'm sitting around about 10 to 12 inches away from the Mac at the moment, and just so you've got a comparison, it should be the same. I will do exactly the same recording now on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And this is a recording on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. In theory, they should look exactly the same. It's meant to be exactly the same camera in there. The only difference may be the microphone setup. So it'll be interesting to see how similar they compare to this brand new M2 MacBook Air. 
And along with this brand new design from the MacBook Air come colors for the first time. You can get it in a choice of four. It's in space gray, silver, starlight, or this, the midnight, which I think is gonna be the most popular color, but just be warned. If you were watching the event at WWDC, you would have seen people say that it's a fingerprint magnet. My hands aren't particularly greasy, but honestly, it does attract every single mark. You're gonna need a set of these, the microfiber cloths. The good news is it does polish off easily, but uh, I'm a little bit fussy about things and I hate fingerprints. It does attract the fingerprints, but that said, I think it is my favorite of the four colors. The backlit keyboard feels identical to that on the MacBook Pro, beautifully balanced, and of course, you now have Touch ID on it as well. I've had this MacBook Air now for around about five or six hours and my intention is to try and edit the video that you're watching and make the thumbnail on the charge came on this MacBook Air straight out of the box. I'll let you know if that was ambitious or how I got on with that. When it comes to specking up your MacBook Air, maybe go a slightly different route to me. I was limited as to what was available on the website last Friday on pre-order day, but my suggestion to you would be try and go for 16 gigs of RAM. That you can't do anything about once you've ordered it. So if you can possibly go for 16 gigs of RAM, that would see you into the future. Storage, avoid 256 gigs. There seems to be some issue with memory swap there, so definitely avoid the 256 gigs. Go for 512, and if possible, go for a terabyte of SSD. So I would suggest, if you can, go for a terabyte of SSD storage and go for 16 gigs of unified memory or RAM. That will see you well into the future. I'm really looking forward to beginning to use this. I'll let you know how I got on with the battery. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you are enjoying it, let me know in the comments down below, and also let me know how you get on with your M2 MacBook Air. Let me know if you're enjoying it and what you've been using it for. I'll catch you on the next video. All right, guys, well, just a quick catch up late into the evening. It's around about nine o'clock now. I started putting this video together at around about one this afternoon. I'm just about done on the edit now. All of the edit has been done on the M2 MacBook Air, but just to let you know that I didn't quite manage it on a charge. I haven't got anywhere near the thumbnail yet. I think that's gonna be done tomorrow morning. Um, but I've had to charge it up after around about six or seven hours of fairly intensive work, to be fair. It was doing a lot of video editing, so it wasn't bad, and that was straight out of the box. It wasn't even a full charge, um, so it served me well, and it was just one other thing I wanted to let you know was that there has been a little bit of memory swap issue. I think that's what it is, at least. On the playback, it would not find where the playhead was, so I knew what the video should be while I was playing it, and yet when I went to play it, it just went black. So I had to change the resolution of the playback and that sorted it. Other than that, everything else has been really good. The screen actually feels really, really good. I'm surprised how good the screen feels. Late into the evening, it doesn't feel small. I was wondering how I was gonna get on using this for a full day. It hasn't been a problem at all. The 16 inch is packed away. I've used this all day long and it's been really good. The setup's far from complete. All I've got on here at the moment is Premiere Pro and Photoshop to do the thumbnail tomorrow morning. Um, but on the whole, it's great. It's just that one little issue, which I think is a memory swap issue because this is only the eight gig version. So what I said earlier on about trying to get the 16 gig version still stands true. Um, but other than that, it's been a real joy to use.